This is a, a Gorilla Geek patent uh, test procedure here. And I call this the uh, penetration test. So let me set up uh, my test equipment on the other side here and I'll show you what that entails. Now this test is to uh, test for shit hit the fan, WROL survivability. And it's uh, very crucial to uh, all the preppers and survivalists out there. And it must pass this particular test. If it doesn't, then you have a piece of crap, uh, piece of gear. So uh, let me uh, break out my highly precise piece of precision equipment here to test that particular feature out. Gorilla Gate going 10-8. What you see in front of me here is a UHF duplexer that a YouTube viewer has sent me to test out. I would like to personally thank uh, him for having that trust and confidence in me for, for doing this. He did not send this to me for me to keep. I'm going to test it out for him, videotape it, because he's uh, curious to see if this thing is uh, tuned for per his specification. A few videos ago I did mention that uh, I was tempted to buy one of these units off of eBay. It's a Chinese made duplexer and they go they average around 50 to 100 bucks depending on what it is and, and frequency span and specs but uh, I wanted to test one of these for a curious uh, to to satisfy my curiosity but the price was was not justifiable for me to go ahead and do that and I have no use for a duplexer uh, at this moment so but I guess he seen one of my videos and and was like hey I got one let me send one to him so uh, here it is it's a UHF duplexer there it is right there it's from China and you see this all over YouTube no oh, not YouTube but uh, eBay and some other websites and let's see what the quality of this is it's been tuned to his specification uh, he's building a GMRS repeater and this is the duplex for it and it's going to be a full-fledged repeater uh, with transmit and receive going on at the same time so he does need one of this these units so we're going to test it out and see uh, if it delivers and I'm also going to compare it to an American made duplexer this is from 1989 still good solid but it's a comparison but it's more like lemon and lime comparison this has a, a little bit of difference uh, obviously physically but then also uh, performance wise as well so this video is pretty much custom made for him to 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 see how this thing operates but the rest of you guys of course could come along and join in on the fun so here's a spectrum analyzer and I have the reference point on this line right here that's if my generator here is going right into my receive port in here directly so that's like a perfect uh, short or run through if, if you will and that's represented by this line here once I put it on the filter on the duplexer here is going to change that waveform to see what is being dumped to the ground and what is being passed so we're going to test the transmitter side of the house here and the transmit frequency for the repeater will be 462.725 a GMRS uh, frequency so the repeater when it receives a signal is going to repeat out on that channel so the signal path is the transmitter is going to go up this way and then back out the antenna that way and this is representing uh, a load it needs a load so it'll fake it out into thinking there's another part to this because everything needs to be interconnected or seeing the proper levels but anyway let's see what that looks like on the screen and excuse me for the glare and that's what it looks like this cliff right here right on top this marker here that is going straight up and down over here, that intersection there is 462.725. And it looks like we have 1 dB of attenuation uh, resistance, if you will. And that is normal for duplexers and cavities. You, uh, 
no more uh, you'll, you'll always get some losses when you go through a device and, and that is normal and it's tuned to that particular frequency there and then this big old dip right here uh, this is uh, the receive frequency 467.725 and that is tuned to that frequency there so the transmit side of this duplexer is tuned properly so what would happen is you're transmitting on 462.725 and it's going to pass through the duplexer but if there's any spur signals or anything or, or just the power of the transmitter itself uh, to sort of desensitize your antenna it's going to be dumped down here and that's like this noise floor here and the noise floor is pretty much static or or the very lowest point in, in the spectrum I don't know if that makes sense but anyway and that's what it is and, and that's what it looks like what kind of looks kind of different to me or, or or weird is this flat line here usually you should see another like a uh, hump like this but opposite for your transmitter frequency but you get the straight line here so if the transmitter is transmitting on a signal around 461 or 460 or anything lower going this way it's going to pass that through the filter instead of dumping it to ground usually uh, cavities have more selectivity it would only let just a narrow bandwidth of frequencies through not this wide band sort of uh, 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 thing here so that's that looks kind of weird to me but it seems normal for this unit I guess uh, Chinese made what do you what do you expect but it's not gonna mess with your system you may cause interference with other people uh, or other devices if, if you're like in a congested hilltop or something like that but I wouldn't stress too much about it unless that interference is really interfering with them and they find out that you are the cause of it but if you're out in the boondock somewhere uh, backwoods no no other devices around no big deal usually those levels are so low that it won't reach anybody but uh, that's just that's just one thing to look out for if, if you if they think that you're interfering this is the reason why and let's look at that same signal through our uh, commercial grade duplexer here so here is an actual American made duplexer here uh, specifically decibel product and the same configuration and this is what it looks like on the screen and that's the hump that I was uh, referring to that's the selectivity it's gonna let pass 462 that's 725 and dump anything around 467.725 and if you notice it, it also attenuates a whole lot of signal on this side around and on this on this side of the house it's also dumping all these frequencies not as much as this guy right down here but you get some attenuation quite a bit so this is not going to cause as much interference as this device here but it's pretty similar to what you got there you see it's, it's filtering out the uh, the receive uh, frequency here 467 almost a little bit better than, than than what this guy did but it's close enough and also then you have more selectivity up here where you're only passing a, a smaller bandwidth of frequency out the transmitter what you actually are tuned for which is what you want so that is the big difference between these two items and here's the receive side of the house same setup but just flipped backwards and this is what it looks like on the uh, scope there and it's just the opposite transverse image of what you've seen before and again you're dumping into ground or filtering out your transmit frequency which is 462.725 the maximum amount which that is what you want the uh, transmitter needs to be dumped as much as possible so it won't cause 
uh, desensitization or interference on your receive signal. And your receive signal, you, you this is the uh, reference level there, and it is tuned to that amount. And it looks like you have about 1.5 dBs of attenuation. So it's attenuating a little bit uh, more than the transmit side. So what that means in English is uh, you might lose a little bit of range, but not much. And if you look at this waveform, it's not that pronounced peak that we've seen on the commercial duplexer. You have this sort of wide band uh, passage of frequency that could still get into your receiver. So that could cause somewhat of a problem if you're on a congested site, let's say uh, a building top that has a bunch of transmitters up there, especially in the UHF frequency band. Uh, a hilltop that has a bunch of transmitters on top and it looks like uh, 467, 470, around 470 to about 499 megahertz that's where you're going to get most of the sensitization if you're close to those transmitters it's not going to filter those suckers out <laughs> so that may be a problem is uh, I would say it's not recommended to put this repeater on a congested site you could test it out to see if it'll work but don't be surprised if you get some interference and some desensitization uh, from other transmitters in the area, not your own repeater uh, transmitter. It looks like that's being dumped very well here. And here we're going to test out the receive side of this of the uh, commercial duplexer here, see what how it compares. And no surprise, it's the inverse of what you've seen before. Here, 462 is being filtered out, so when the transmitter uh, is transmitting on this duplexer, it's not just going to affect your receive signal up here. It's going to go straight to uh, dirt. And then there's the uh, selectivity dip uh, peak for 467.725 megahertz. And you can see there is, is just a, a peak there to let that particular bandwidth pass, your, your, the frequency that you're concerned with. And everything else is somewhat attenuated. And let's see, it's attenuated by 20 dB, so it is knocked down quite a bit to prevent uh, interference from other transmitters from messing with you as well and looks like your insertion loss is 2 dBs uh, on this here actually 1.5 exactly like yours so uh, final summary yeah this thing is tuned up as advertised and what you wanted so that's good uh, this unit here the your miniaturized uh, duplexers uh, they're not as sensitive as these big boys up here so this will survive being transported I'm pretty sure not dropped too many times but they're they're kind of made to go into vehicles and stuff like that uh, or uh, box kits to be put on a uh, go go boxes to be put on a hilltop and, and somewhat rough handled so between the the uh, transport from China to the East Coast then the East Coast to me it kept its frequency right on, right on track it didn't drift from from what is advertised so that is kick ash I'm impressed with that uh, what else uh, yeah as as stated before and what you should expect from this unit uh, like I said I, I would not recommend putting this piece of gear on a radio congested site like a, a hilltop a prominent hilltop that has a whole bunch of powerful transmitters because I don't think it'll filter out those things very well and you may cause a little bit of interference to them uh, but this device here would work with your repeater as far as what it's designed to do uh, as far as that interference and stuff like that you're just gonna have to go up there and test it and the best way to do that is uh, go ahead and put it up there and go to like the outer limits of the range of this of this uh, uh, piece of gear and test it from a location that has no uh, radios on site where your radio is the only one up there and then to test it on the congested site to see what the difference is in range with that is so there you have it uh, 
I'm I'm somewhat impressed, not not too much, but but I know now what to expect if I, if I want to buy one of these from eBay from China. Uh, like I said, this thing is average fifty to a hundred dollars. This is used, twenty years old. This could run up from three hundred bucks on up, especially if they're in the hand bands, because that's that's uh, that's a popular item. Uh, Hams like to recycle commercial gear, and if it could be tuned to their frequency range, then then this becomes more valuable. You have yourself here a pretty good uh, piece of gear. Satisfied my curiosity as as to how these Chinese duplexes work and how they perform. Hopefully, this could help out other people out in YouTube that have uh, questions about these Chinese duplexers and. Uh, Maybe this could uh, either persuade you or to or not to buy this piece of gear. Uh, on another note, uh, I'd like to thank this guy for sending this thing to me to test out and I'm going to send it right back as soon as I can. But uh, it took three weeks for me to kind of get to this point to actually test this out, film it and, and give his uh, answer back. And uh, he was very patient, which, which I'm glad. I, I got hit with a lot of things, family obligations. I got deployed to a fire for about a week, uh, six hours away from me. And at this time, I could be deployed right now. So uh, I don't have time to be testing other people's gear. If it's really interesting enough, then I will. But, but don't get hurt if I deny a request to test out your gear because time and also money I mean if it's a heavy piece of gear uh, I don't want to pay for shipping I, I'm though in this case here I am offering to pay for half of the shipping because uh, he shouldn't pay for for you know it's I'm not here to make money or waste people's money so that's where I'm coming from I, I like to keep this thing uh, high with high integrity as far as my channel and and to put forth the most truthful opinionated uh, information and facts that I can so that's where I'm coming from Gorilla Geek going 10-10